Some try to argue that omniscience is logically impossible and that no being can ever really be said to be omniscient. God, who theists claim is omniscient, can't know everything because he doesn't know what it is like to sin or what it is like to be me and not be God. God has never experienced not being omniscient, so he lacks this piece of knowledge, and therefore, omniscience is truly logically impossible. However, like with the omnipotence paradox, this objection is based on a misunderstanding of how omniscience is defined. So let's look into that. Omniscience, as defined by theistic philosophers, means knowing all true propositions and believing no false propositions. This includes all logical and factual truths, as well as all true propositions expressed in future, present, and past tense. This definition itself doesn't seem to contain any logical contradictions, like how the opening objection is worded. And that is because this was defined by a conceptualist model, not a perceptualist model of omniscience. A perceptualist model says God's knowledge is based on experiencing or perceiving everything, whereas a conceptualist model just says omniscience is knowing all true propositions. He simply knows what will happen without having to experience that which will happen. For example, I can know my daughter will take a nap today without having to experience it through her eyes. My knowledge of this event taking place is not based on me actually experiencing it through her, but simply knowing the truth of the situation. Likewise, when theists say God is omniscient, we are not arguing God has experienced everything and therefore must experience what it is like to sin or know nothing. This would only be an issue if the theist was going so far as to argue omniscience under a perceptualist model, which we don't have to commit to. Traditionally, omniscience has only been understood as defined under a conceptualist model. God simply knows all true propositions and what will happen. That doesn't mean God has to perceive or experience everything for himself. So just like with omnipotence, this alleged paradox is based on trying to force a definition onto the theist we don't necessarily have to hold to. So obviously, it is perfectly logical for a being to know all true propositions, and therefore, it's logically possible to be omniscient. However, many try to argue against the idea a being can be omniscient and morally perfect. If one is omniscient, then one would know all future events. One would know what I'm going to do tomorrow and 10 years from now. But if God already knows what is going to happen, then my future is already determined. In other words, God has fated everything to happen by being omniscient, and therefore, He is the cause of all the evil and misfortune. There really is no such thing as free will, because God fated everything to happen since He foreknew everything before it actually did happen. So either we have free will, or God is omniscient, but how could both be true? So if omniscience includes knowledge of all future events, then how do we escape fatalism? Which is the belief that all events are predetermined, and therefore inevitable. If all events were foreknown by an omniscient being before time began, then doesn't that mean all things are fated or determined? Well, the error of this idea is it assumes omniscience is the cause or fates all events, when in reality, it is the other way around. Let's say I had a time machine and I went into the future and saw everything you're going to do tomorrow. Then I came back to the present time. Would my foreknowledge determine everything you are going to do tomorrow? Of course not. It was your actions in the future which determined what I knew. God's foreknowledge would work the same way. His knowledge doesn't seal your future fate, your own choices do, and God is simply aware of what you will do, as William Lane Craig says. So by your actions, you have the ability, by what you do, in a sense, to determine what God will have believed in the past. Um, his knowledge is sort of like an infallible barometer of the weather. The, the barometer never fails, it's always right. But clearly, the barometer doesn't determine the weather. If the weather were different, the barometer would have been different. So it, it, the, the foreknowledge of God is like an infallible barometer, and you're free to do whatever you want, but you're just not free to fool the barometer. God knows whatever it is you do. So your action is logically prior to what God foreknows.
but his foreknowledge is chronologically prior to what you do. The atheist philosopher Nicholas Everett agrees when he says, We will argue that theists have been unnecessarily concerned about divine foreknowledge of free action. These two concepts are not in any conflict. Let's also remember if God is outside of time, then he would simply actualize all time at once. He would not be in the past knowing how the future plays out, so to speak, but in all time simultaneously. So from his perspective, he would actualize all our actions in a single timeless instance. And so outside of time, foreknowledge would be meaningless. Such an idea is hard to fathom, but it simply means God would not determine anything by simply knowing. What happens determines what God knows. Now some still try to argue God still created the universe, knowing of all the evil that would happen. So God must be responsible since he knew what would happen, yet still chose to create the universe. However, this can be addressed through Molinism, named for the theologian Luis Molina. We need to remember that God does not just simply have foreknowledge of the future that will happen, but he also has foreknowledge of every future that possibly could happen. We can think of God's knowledge in three epistemic categories. First, there is his natural knowledge. This is God's knowledge of all logical truths and everything that could happen. In God's natural knowledge, he can actualize a world where I become a fireman, or a baker, or any other profession. However, that is not to say in all these worlds, I freely choose these professions. Natural knowledge simply contains all the logical possible worlds, but not all the feasible worlds which take into account human free will. This is where the next area of knowledge comes in, God's middle knowledge. Middle knowledge contains all the feasible possible worlds. That is to say, all the possible worlds where God could actualize a possible world while working with human freedom. For example, if God wants to actualize a world where creatures have free will, then their choices must be factored in, in regards to what is feasible. Perhaps there is a possible world where in the right circumstances, I freely choose to be a fireman. But perhaps there are no possible worlds where there are circumstances where I would ever freely choose to be a hairdresser. Thus in middle knowledge, there are no possible worlds where I freely choose to be a hairdresser. So that world could not be actualized in middle knowledge. It can only be actualized in natural knowledge, where freedom is not taken into account. Therefore, middle knowledge contains all the feasible worlds where God can actualize a state of affairs while working with the choices of free creatures. Thus, the response goes, it is possible that in middle knowledge, there are no possible worlds where God could create a world where we are free and there is no evil or misfortune. However, if that is true, then God would actualize the world where there is the least amount of evil, while taking human free choices into account. Therefore, the argument is, given human freedom within middle knowledge, God might not be able to actualize a perfect world or a world with less evil, because there are no possible worlds where we are free and always do the right thing, or do the good more often. A good example can be taken from a recent movie. In Avengers Infinity Wars, Doctor Strange looks into the future and sees over 14 million possible futures, all but one and horribly. So Doctor Strange begins the process to see the one good outcome actually come to fruition. Likewise, one can argue God looks into all possible futures with human freedom and sees most and horribly, but perhaps there are some that can end in good, and some where he can maximize the most amount of goodness, while still having creatures that are free. If God is the good, as we've argued in two past videos, this is what he would do as a result, create the most feasible world where good is most maximized, along with allowing freedom. And that would lead us to the third area of knowledge, his free knowledge, which is the knowledge of what actual events will play out in the actual world. Now, of course, this brings up all sorts of questions concerning heaven, hell, and evil, and we will deal with these issues one at a time in the next few videos. But for now, as you can see, once we understand omniscience, we can see there are no logical contradictions at play, nor is it incompatible with his goodness. There simply is no omniscience paradox that creates a problem for theism 
once it is properly understood through a conceptualist model and Molinism.